and welcome back to yet another tutorial in this video you're going to learn that how you can create your own blockchain using node.js and javascript it's absolutely beginner friendly you can easily able to build your own blockchain and you will know that what is the structure of creating a block what data you can assign inside a single block and how you can map because every single block is connected with one another so you have to know that how the data is flowing and in this video you will have a complete idea that how you can create your own blockchain from scratch using the power of node.js and javascript so what i did so far i have already initialized the project and i have also to depend install all the dependency which we're going to need for building our own blockchains so you need two packages only you need node.js and you need crypto.js these are the two packages we're going to utilize for creating our own blockchains and if you're a window user if you're a mac user if you don't have node.js that's a very easy process to install in your computer like how to install node.js in google and it will give you the entire tutorial that how you can install that that's fairly easy so this is my package json file what i did i gave my project name blockchain this is the version description and index which is not that important this is the script i have i call start you can give whatever name you want i'm using node and this is the file which i have created blockchain.js in that we go to write the entire code for our blockchains and the one thing i want to highlight is that you have to be good with the classes in javascript because we're going to use ecma 6 of javascript class constructors framework to creating the block okay so hope everything will make sense just follow along with me so the very first thing we have to do is to import the package we're going to use hash 256 algorithm and that's we're going to get from crypto JS. js this is the package we have installed so i believe that you guys have installed this crypto js package from there we are getting this hash 256 and now we have to define our classes so we're going to create two classes one class is going to be called crypto block and the other class we're going to create crypto blockchain each of this class will have a couple of method which we're going to utilize for creating blockchain blocks okay so let's define our class very first class we'll call it crypto block and in that we're going to assign the primary data which the blocks will have which every single block will have so let's come here we have to define our constructor and in that constructor we're going to pass all the data so in the blockchain what you will see when you do any transaction that every single will block will have its index the number the block number it will have the data it will have the timestamp it will have the previous hatch okay so those are the data we're going to assign to our block so let's take this index timestamp data the data we want to assign inside the in the block when we do any transaction so just imagine that you are creating nft so that data we're going to assign inside this data field and this previous hashing previous hash okay so this is the previous hash we'll have because every single block will have its previous hash and that's how we can relate with one block to the another one because the new block will contain the information about the previous block and that's how we make chain on the blockchain and that's why it's called blockchain okay so that's the constructor we have and now we have to simply update this data so we'll say this dot index is going to be index this dot timestamp is going to be timestamp and we have this dot data it's going to be the data and now we're going to use this dot preceding hash and this preceding hash and now we have to create the actual hash for the data we are getting into this particular block so in that hash will contain a lot of information it will contain the index it will contain the timestamp it will contain the data it will contain the previous hash so it's going to contain all of this hash and we're going to utilize this hash 256 algorithm to create the current hash for this block okay so for that what i will do i'm going to create a method so let me show you how you can create the method so i'll call this dot hash and we're going to call this dot compute hash so this is the method we're going to create and in that we're going to pass all of the data and it will return us the hash of that data okay so let's close this one and now we have to define the nuisance because every single block will have its number so that's the general convention we are following so the first block will have the zero and that's will keep go on on every single block will add one 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 okay that's what we have so let's close this and now we have to create this method this method this dot compute hash so let's come here we'll say compute hash and in that we have to define all the variables so we have to return we're going to use this hash 256 algorithm and in that we have to pass the data so the data we have to pass is this this dot index and we have to pass this dot preceding hash we have to pass the timestamp and we have to pass the data so the data is going to be in form of stringify 
in JSON because that's how we pass the data when we actually it's JSON data is a very light data and it's very easy to upload and get so that's why we are passing the data in the form of JSON in that we're going to take the data in the entire data and we're also going to take this nuisance because all of these data we are assigning and then we are creating hash on top of it we call the strings so this is the method we have created hope this entire thing makes sense so we are using hash 256 algorithm and we are passing all of the data for the particular block and we are creating hash of it and that hash we're going to assign to this block and now we have to create one more method which will focus on the behavior of the blockchain so you have heard about proof of work proof of proof of concept so these are a lot of terms you have heard so we're going to build on proof of work concept so we'll say let's define the method proof of work and in that we have to pass the difficulty so i'm not coming up with this entire code because when you build a proof of work system on the blockchains so there are a couple of predefined methods which you have to implement in your code and that's what i'm going to write exactly so so we'll take this while and here we're going to define this dot hash we'll say substring and then we have to pass the values so first thing is going to be the zero and we have to assign the difficulty and it will be an array because the difficulty will be in array so it will start from zero to it will go all the way to five and we'll say one plus one and join with the zero so hope this entire thing makes sense now let's come down here and here we're going to simply say this dot nuance because when the transaction will complete it when the block is get created when the next ball block will create we have to increase this nuisance okay one so that's the proof of work and here we have to simply take the hash and we're going to use the same compute hash method which will going to encrypt and create the hash for the particular block so that looks fine that's the proof of work okay so i hope this entire thing makes sense to all of you this is the very first class we have created now we're going to create the second class so let's come down we'll say class crypto blockchains and in that we're going to utilize the class we have created above for creating the block so let me show you how we can do that so let's come here here we're going to take this constructor and that we don't need to pass any argument because all the argument we are passing in the very first class we have created crypto block and that so here we're going to simply reference to those data so we'll what we'll do we'll say this dot blockchain and in that we're going to take this this dot genesis block so this is the method we're going to create and this method will create the first block so as you know that on the blockchain the very first block is called genesis block means that's the starting point for the particular blockchain so that's what we have and this is the method we're going to create right now just wait we'll say this dot difficulty and this one is coming for four so you can go with the hard code value or you can just define as it is i'm going with the hard code value i'm defining that particular block will have a four difficulty so that's the constructor we have and here i'm now i'm going to create this method start genesis block so let's come here start genesis block and in that what i will do i'm going to simply return the method we have created the class we have created new crypto and in that i have to pass all of the data because we have to pass the index we have to pass the date the timestamp we have to pass the data and we have to preceding hatch because the first block will have the zero hash it will have no data so that's why we have assigned zero but the next blocks will have data and it will get automatically updated okay so the only configure you have to do in the very first block not on the other blocks and that looks fine to me now we that's what we're going to return and that's what we're going to return from here and now we have to create one more method so we'll come here we'll say opt-in last block because we have to know that how many blocks we have created and we have to create the connection between the new one and the last one so we have to get the last block and that's last block data we're going to assign to the new block and that's how we can make the chain okay so let's get the last block of the particular blockchain and this mob, this method we are creating right now this will create this will get us the last block so what we'll do we'll simply return this dot blockchains and we have to get the length so how many blocks were created so far on the blockchains uh, if we do minus one so it will give us the last block which created successfully so we got the last block so once we have the last block now we're going to create one more method called add new block and this block will be really responsible for creating the block exactly the new one because we have the genesis block we have the last one and now this will create the new one so we'll say new block and inside that we're going to use it the method 
new block will say preceding hash is equal to be the last one so whatever the last block we have we have to get that block hash so that's how we can able to access the last o block hash so once we have the hash hash of the last block and this method is optional you can include it but i'll give this comment so you guys can refer back to it so we have the last block has now we have to call this proof of work from there we have to get the difficulties now we have to get the block and we're going to push that into a new block because all of the data we have to push inside this new block so once we have that new block so that looks pretty fine to me now we have to write one more method which will allow us to validate the block so what if someone manipulate the data in on the blockchains so we need to have some function in our method which can validate whenever any data get created whenever any block get created on the blockchain so we need to have a function method which can validate the two blocks the last one and the new one because if anybody will do any changes in any block the on the entire blockchain the entire data the hash we are creating and that hash is keeping the information about the blockchains and that hash is connecting one block to another okay so the entire hash will be changed if someone manipulate the data in one single particular block okay so let's create the function check chain validate in that we're going to take this for loop and we'll say let i is equal to one and then we have to get the length of the entire blocks we have to increment that one and then we're going to take this variable const we'll say current block we have to get the current block and once we have the current block now we have to take the preceding block the last block and that's how we can get it so whatever the current block is right now we have we have to subtract it with one so it will give us the last block so we have the last block once we have the last block here we're going to build the if statement and we're going to simply compare the hash of the two blocks so we'll say block hash is not is not equal to the current block compute hash block has will generate by compute hash functions if none of these as equal that means something is wrong and we're going to return this false that's the first check we are doing now let's do the second check we'll say current block preceding hash the previous block hash if that's not equal to the preceding hash then we have to simply return this otherwise we have to return this true by default so that's the simple validation function we have hope everything is making sense to all of you guys we haven't done anything fancy we have just written the simple javascript classes structure for creating block and assigning data and validating data so that looks fine let's come here now we're going to actually test the classes we have created so first thing we have to do is we have to create the instant of the classes and we're going to initialize that so let's let me take a variable we'll call the blockchain coder and by the way if you haven't checked all the courses which i have on the blockchain coder then do let me do just go and check it out and show your support in that okay so now i'm going to create block so in ecma 6 in javascript this is how we can construct the classes we'll use this new keyword and then we have to provide the class name so crypto block chain so we have the entire instead in here so we can easily able to call all the method which we have in the blockchain so let me console log this the blockchain mining in process so this is the simple console log we'll do and now we're going to create a block so let's create a block we'll use the instant the blockchain coder and then we're going to call this method add new block because this will allow us to create new block and in that we have to pass the data so we're going to call this function new crypto block as you remember i hope you guys haven't forgot that this is going to be create the block and in that we have to pass the data so we have to pass the index we have to pass the date we have to pass the data so this time data the data you can pass in form of number string object and array is totally up to you but here i'm going to pass the data in form of object so let me define that so we'll have a sender we'll have a recipient and the last one will have the quantity you can add multiple data like if you check ethereum if you check polygon there is tons of information we have in every single block like we have nuisance we have timestamp we have two isr vx a lot of things we have in that you can assign all of those variables. but for the simplicity i'm going with a simple approach so these are the three data we want to assign so this is how we can create a one block this is the very first block let's create one more block so we'll say the blockchain coder and i have to follow the same thing i have to provide all the data so this time this is going to be a two sender is going to be the blockchain coder 
the recipient is going to be my little angel Shwabhai and the quantity is going to be 100 and now we're going to simply console log out the blocks so we'll say console log json stringify and that we're going to pass this blockchain coder and null and for the difficulty so that's the entire code so that's the entire code we have written hope the entire thing makes sense to all of you guys that how we are assigning the data how we are calling these functions how we are creating new blocks now let me show you that how you can test it out so to test this all you have to do is to open up your terminal and i have already tested this before so let me clear it out and let me show you from scratch so if i come back to the my packages and file this is the exact command i have to run simply grab that one and simply paste here and hit enter you can see the blockchain coder and boom here we have created all the blocks so this is the very first block we have index zero timestamp and the data we have assigned and as i told you the genesis block will have the zero preceding hash because there is no data in the very first block and this is the hash we have generated by all of these data using sh256 algorithm this is the second block we have and that we have passed all of these data sender recipient and quantity and this time in the second block you will find that we have preceding hash and this preceding hash and this hash both are same and that's how we can create the chain between one block to another one and if you come to the second one you will find the same thing we have provided all of these data and here we have the preceding hash and this hash matches to this one this one and the difficulty we have assigned to four you can set this difficulty based on the service you are providing because this is the simple blockchain block we are creating on the blockchain but when you will actually build a blockchain on on a uh, like like a ethereum then you have to assign a multiple data and that block difficulty will be depend on base of the use case the based on the miners based on the timing a lot of things so i believe that now you guys have got the idea that how you can create your own blockchains by following the javascript classes structure and how you can generate the block how you can assign the blocks and it's absolutely amazing and absolutely fine okay so if you run the same command it will create the block and here you will have that one this looks absolutely fine so hope this entire thing makes sense and if you still have any confusion and doubt let me know in the comment section i'll definitely try to answer that and i'll try to clear all your doubts so with that i'm ending this video hope you guys have liked it if you're still new to my channel hit like and subscribe that will motivate me a lot and do let me know your thought that what do you think about this and what's your idea you have on top of this so if i find it interested and that's and if your idea is really helpful for other other members of our community then definitely we'll try to build a tutorial on top of that okay so for the time being that's the only thing i want to talk about see you in the next video have a wonderful day Bye bye